For our practice exercise, we're going to work a little with the typography. So come back to our website and click on the typing exercise worksheet. To open that image in Photoshop, click and drag it down to the Photoshop icon on your dock and let go. And then I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command plus a couple times. You can also use your zoom magnifying tool. And then hold spacebar, click and drag to pan up to frame this top little bit in my window. Now if you watched the last tutorial, we should be ready to go with all of our type settings. So I'm going to begin with single click. Single click is just that. If you single click and type, it will create a sentence. So my name is, I'm going to use my name, and you use yours. And let's see, and my hair is brown. With single click typing, if I continue typing on this line, it's not going to recognize the end of the document. If I keep typing, it'll just go on into infinity. So to create a second line, you actually need to hit return and it will go down another line. But since I don't really need two lines in this, I'm going to stick with the one I'm deleting back. I need to end my active type because right now if I, for example, hit Z to get my zoom tool, it would type a letter Z, which I don't want. To end the active type, you can either hit enter if you have a full keyboard, command return if you have a laptop keyboard, or click on the move tool and all of those will end the type. So you see that little underline that was there went away and it is finalized. If you look over here on the right side in your layers panel, you can see you now have a type layer. In Photoshop, everything works in layers and it's almost like you're piling up layers of glass with different things on them and you can affect each one individually and move them around separate from the others. So right now this is separate from the background. I could get my move tool and click and drag and move it around and it wouldn't affect the background, which is this bottom layer. So that's single click typing and your first introduction to layers. Let's take a look at tracking and kerning. So grab your text tool again if you don't already have it. Click and let's just type your name for this time. I will explain this if I can. Let's see. Okay, character box. I'm going to drag it over here so we can see it closer to where we're working. Um, tracking is the distance between all of the letters. So the spacing between all of the letters of a piece of type is the tracking. And you can affect that right here with this little rectangular VA with a line underneath it. If you're not sure which one of these is which, if you hover over the symbol for a moment, it will pop up the little help you window and tell you what that is. So to change the tracking, I can click this little drop down. Let's try one of these positive numbers and tracking is a small measurement. If I click number five, you'll notice that this hardly moved at all. But if I come up here to maybe a hundred, you can see that it moves further apart. I can actually even highlight this and type in a much larger number and push enter and it will track those all the way apart. Kerning is the distance between two specific letters and this right here is the kerning and you can see if I just click on it it's not actually available but it will become available as soon as I click between two letters so at that point I can come in here and select a value if I choose negative it will move things back closer together I can set it to zero which is automatic or the way I use it most is to adjust very specifically things between uh, the space between letters. I click between the two, I hold down option and use the left and right arrow keys and that can move those closer or further apart. Once again when I'm done I can push enter to be done. And that's kerning. Kerning is important uh, to use on the fly because not all fonts are made alike. When we get into fonts you'll really see that some are created very well with the tracking figured out so that there's not large gaps between specific letters. A and V are a classic example. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm going to type A and V. And I'm going to set my tracking back to zero so I can see what it automatically comes with. So this is really close but you can see with an A and a V, if I pull this out, the tracking looks at the space from 
the farthest edge of a letter to the other the, to the next letter's farthest edge and puts those right up together. So sometimes when you get type that has these overlapping letters, you want it to move closer together. So what's a word that has an AV in it? Maybe have. If I click in between those two, I can hold down Option and tab, or not tab, but I'm sorry, left arrow over. And then when I let go of Option, I can just left arrow or right arrow between letters and affect each one of those until I'm happy with the results and I can push Enter. So I have a temporary layer on here called Have. I want to get rid of it. The way you get rid of a layer in your Layers panel is by clicking on it to make it the active layer. So everything that's blue here is the active layer. And then click on the trash can. Okay, I need to zoom back out. So I'm going to hit Command-0 so we can actually see everything that's going on. I'm even going to move my character panel back over here so that I don't need to deal with it right at the moment. Our next one is letting. So zooming back in, what we need is a couple of sentences. So I'm going to grab my move tool and I, what I want to do is make a copy of this single click layer and move it down here to letting so I don't have to type this sentence all over again. Now on my layers box, the layer that I'm actually on is the Rachel Smith layer. And next to it is a little eyeball. If I click that, it'll hide it. If I click it again, it'll show it. But I know that I'm not on the layer that I actually want to affect. The one that I want to move is the single click layer. Once again, a bunch of different ways we could get this. I could simply click on it in my layers box. And once I have that as the active layer, knowing it is active because it's blue, I, then I can grab my move tool and move it around. So let's go with that for right now. Let's make a copy. The easiest way to copy this layer is to click and drag this active layer down to the new layer icon which is next to the trash bin and let go and now I have a new copy. I still have my move tool so I can click and drag it down here to letting. Now I'm going to line it up a little closer to that word letting and you'll see why in just a second. I want my type tool. I can make type active again by simply clicking within the type with my type tool. At that point I could click and highlight and do a copy which I can do by coming up to let's see edit, copy, which you can see is command C, and then I want to copy on the next line down. So I'm going to move my cursor down to the end of this type and push return to go down a line and then I want to paste by doing edit, paste. Okay, let's end this type for right now and push enter because what we're going to talk about now is letting. Letting is the space between lines. So I remember the difference between kerning and letting by letting starts with lines. Letting is the space between lines. And sometimes we really need to change the space between lines. Once again, you'll be on whatever layer is active. You don't actually have anything need to have anything highlighted. We can do it to the whole layer at once and letting is the one in your character panel that has an A stacked on top of another A. So if we come in here and choose one of these, I'm going to choose 60, you'll notice that that space became a lot further down and in fact if I grab my type tool and move to the end of this type and push return it's going to be that much further down the next time. Now 60 is a little too far. You can see my second line is clear here below baseline. I actually want to get them both in this one up here. So I'm going to hit enter so that I can affect the entire layer at once. And I'm going to come back up here and choose a different number. So what will 36 look like? That's a little closer. But you know what? This could take a while jumping back and forth between the numbers to see what works. What I'm actually going to do that works even better is grab my type tool, click within the type to make it active, and select everything. So your select everything shortcut, I recommend remembering this because we'll use it a lot, is command A. So everything in that is highlighted. Now I can change the way the letting is by holding down option and using my up and down arrows. So in kerning it's option left and right, letting is option up and down. I can even affect the kerning right now if I wanted to. Doing left makes it tighter, doing right makes it further apart. 
So once you get those two lines lined up between letting, hit enter. All right, what is a baseline? I'm going to zoom in on this little bit that explains about typography. In typography, there are oodles of technical little terms. We really won't be getting into many of those, but I thought it might be useful to have a couple references such as baseline. Now here you can see it, it's the red line, baseline is where the bottom of your average type lines up. So if we look at this Y, the part that goes below the baseline is called the descender. And the kind of the opposite of the baseline is the X height, and everything that goes above the X height is an ascender. So the baseline takes where that bottom part of that type lines up and shifts it around. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit, command minus. I'm going to grab my move tool and choose the, let's see which one of these. I want actually to just type my name I think on this one. So have your text tool chosen and I'm going to grab, type, click once, getting all my terms mixed up here, sorry. Click once and type your name again. And uh, push enter to end it. Baseline is over in your character box. The baseline is right here. It's the one with the large A and then a little A up next to it, which kind of illustrates what we're going to do. I'm going to take the R of my name and make it bigger. So what I've done is I've clicked inside of my type and highlighted it, and then I can actually come up and change just that letter to a different size. So I'm going to type 15 and then hit enter. Um, a couple of times to make that final and then highlight the S and do the same thing. Enter twice. In fact, you know what? I want those to be even bigger. So I'm going to grab the R again by clicking and highlighting it. I'm going to make it into a bold. So I'm changing the style and I'm going to make it 20. I'm going to go for gold here and hit enter twice. Let's do the same to the Smith or the S of the Smith. Come up to your styles, click the drop down and choose bold. And then type in 20 for the size and enter twice. What I want to do is make the rest of the name up higher so it looks like the R and the S are dropping down. So what I can do is highlight that amount of the text and come over to my character box and change this number. So let's see what a 5 looks like. 5 actually looks pretty good. I'm going to actually change it to 4 and then hit enter to finalize that. Come back over here and choose the M-I-T-H of my name and do the same thing. So remember we said 4. Now those are exactly the same. What if I wanted to quickly change where the R and the S are? I actually don't have to come over here. I can simply highlight it and hold down Option and Shift and move my arrow up. So I did it twice. Hold, highlight that, Option, Shift, click the up arrow twice. And then Enter to finish. Okay, so that's affecting the baseline, and we've talked a little bit about the typography types. You should be fairly clear on what letting, tracking, kerning, and single-click typing are, and we'll move on to the next one.